The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Reaper Apparel Company. Reaper Apparel offers a casual line of superb fit, finish, and comfort. We design for those who refuse to die slowly and choose to live untamed. For those who aren't afraid to face the dark, for the ones that thrive in it, and for those who can appreciate life through a grim lens. That's Reaper Apparel Company. Go to the link in the description of this episode, use the promo code Mike Bono, and get 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my own personal merch store, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. I have hats, I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, water bottles, notebooks, you name it, I've got it. The description and the link for that will be in the description of this episode. Also, right now, if you use the promo code WELCOME, I will give you 5% off of your first purchase. That's the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Also, the Rod Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Tactical Brotherhood. All American Made Apparel, which helps support the Second Amendment. You can also find all this in the description of this episode with the link Tactical Brotherhood. Part of every proceed does go to helping veterans, as it is a very good cause. All American-made products made right here in Minnesota. Go and check them out. Use the promo code PATRIOT15 to get 15% off your purchase. Now, let's start the show. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Ride Home Rant. This is your special guest host, John Fitty Falcone. And today I'm filling in for your host with the most, Mike Bono, as we bring you a very special episode of the show with our first ever business roundtable. The show today consists of individuals who are small business owners who will be speaking more about their businesses, why they started their businesses, and many other exciting topics. Speaking of businesses, make sure you check out all of our sponsors on our show. So without further delay, let's introduce our guests. So we have six great guests here today for you. Uh, ranging from different areas across uh, the state of Ohio and and Pennsylvania. Um, And they are going to introduce themselves, kind of let you know where they're from and what their business is. So without further ado, let's start with you, Jason. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, based out of Lake County. The business is Blue Chip Strength, Conditioning, and Fitness. Uh, I used to run uh, personal training and a handful of other things out of it. Right now, it's just focused on off-season strength and conditioning for our high school athletes. Okay, Brandon. What's going on, everybody? I'm Brandon Wiley. Um, I'm out of Erie, Pennsylvania, uh, originally from uh, Sharon, Pennsylvania. Uh, I've been in Erie for about 16 years now. My business is called Opened Eyes, and uh, I founded Opened Eyes about eight years ago now. Um, and it is an organization that is dedicated to leadership development, uh, self development with principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so, essentially, what we do is we are um, act as consultants and we work with organizations, corporations, school districts to um, essentially implement inclusive practice within their workplace to help advance uh, workplace culture. Uh, we do student programming, corporate programming, so on and so forth. And I also uh, am a motivational speaker. Um, I do keynotes um, all over. So uh, that's the essence of our business. All right, Roger. Hi, my name is uh, Roger Wong. Uh, I'm a chiropractor uh, slash spinal decompression physician. I have two practices, uh, one in Ashtabula, Ohio, called Dissenters America um, Ashtabula, or Ashtabula Chiropractic, and I have an office in Willoughby Hills called Cleveland Dissenters. So I specialize, obviously, in chiropractic, low back pain, neck pain, uh, spinal decompression wide, which is my specialty. We specialize in herniated discs, bulge discs, um, sciatica, degenerative discs, you know, preventing preventing any kind of neck or back surgeries is my specialty. And I've been practicing about 20 years. Nicole, let's go to you next. Hi, I'm Nicole, the only female in the group today. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Um, I'm originally from Hermitage, Pennsylvania, but I live in Columbus, Ohio now. I've lived in Columbus, Ohio since 2014. Um, two businesses that uh, I will talk about tonight uh, when those questions go around. But one that my husband and I both have is a real estate investment company in Columbus called DF Premier Homes. 
where we help um, people that are maybe in a distressed situation sell off their property, um, buy rental properties, we wholesale properties. So we do a little bit of everything um, within the real estate world. And then second business is Faithfully Fit, which um, helps people change their their lifestyle around and um, kind of focuses more so towards healthy habits and healthy lifestyle. I lost 40 pounds in 2021 and changed my life um, with better eating habits. And so now I help others do the same. All right, Austin, let's go to you next. Hi, my name is Austin. I'm from the Youngstown area. Um, I have my own podcast called Melodic Live. We cover all the high schools throughout the Valley and a couple colleges as well, all the sporting events. And then, you know, last but not least, your host with the most, who's actually now the first time guest, Mike, take it away. Yeah, as I'm sure everybody knows, I am Mike Bono, <clears throat> originally from West Virginia, uh, now live in a new location, Philo, Ohio. Uh, I own uh, two businesses, kind of like Nicole, uh, that I will be talking about, one of which is where we are at right now, this wonderful podcast that I've been running uh, with your new co-host with the most, uh, Johnny Finney Falcone, uh, and also my own uh, personal merch store for my comedy brand, uh, Mike Bono Comedy. Uh, the store is actually called the Stupid Should Hurt Merch Store. I came up with this idea and this name because I've worked in retail for the past 11 years, and I've heard a lot of stupid questions, and it kind of came up with the idea, and somebody said to me one time, stupid should hurt when they ask these questions, and it kind of just stuck with me, and we've been rolling with it ever since. Uh, the store, I have uh, coffee mugs, hats, t-shirts, hoodies, all the way up to posters and everything like that. Uh, so, And I started this business uh, basically when the pandemic started. So that's what I have. So as you heard, everybody, we have a great panel of guests here who range in a lot of different careers and businesses. So a lot of good questions will be asked and a lot of great answers are going to be given. So what's going to happen is I'm going to moderate this show and just ask the questions and let the guests um, answer appropriately. So let's start with the very first question people definitely want to know is how long have you owned your business and is your business more of a local, regional, or global size business? Jason, let's start with you. Uh, yeah, this is uh, year 13 and um, it is local. Uh, I've tried, you know, tinker with branching out with uh, online programming and that kind of thing, but 99% of what I've done has just been within 50 mile radius of, of where I am. Um, Brandon, let's, let's go to you next. Yeah, I forgot to mention too. I'm, I'm also a licensed mental health therapist here in Erie as well. So I work at the department of veteran affairs. So I work in suicide prevention. Um, so, um, I started off based in, uh, my business when I started my business about eight years ago, um, it was obviously a little bit local, but, um, uh, because this is where I work as well, but I am as of last year, we have officially went national by doing work in Texas. Um, we did some work in the Ohio area, um, and we're looking to expand our business into other locations. So um, the eventual goal is a global entity. So open to eyes global uh, will be will be happening. Um, but I'm still doing, you know, I still do my, my thing with therapy. Um, and I implement a lot of my therapeutic principles into my business as well, because I consider diversity to be a part of like the psychology of the mind, the body and the spirit. So, um, we do a lot of those things as well. So right now we are expanding, um, our mission and vision into other areas. That's awesome. Roger, let's go to you next. Um, I've been practicing in Nashville for about 20 years. Uh, in the Willoughby Hills Cleveland office have been about three years, but obviously being a chiropractor is it's definitely more local because it's more hands-on. So obviously the Asheville area, we, we probably attract within maybe 15, 20 miles. In the Willoughby Hills office, it's in, a, it's in a better location where you could actually attract from a circle. Because we specialize in spinal decompression, we offer like technology nobody has in Northeast Ohio. We're able to attract about a 50-mile radius. Okay. Nicole, let's go to you next. Um, so DF Premier Homes has been around um, now since 2017. I jumped on board with my husband in 2018, but he's been in real estate now for 10 plus years. 
he self taught himself, um, just heard a commercial on, on the radio, um, about 10 years ago about how awesome real estate was. And he self educated himself, got into it. We own 87 doors in Columbus and mostly in the Columbus region. Um, but looking to expand that more South into maybe Florida sometime soon. We'll see. Um, as far as faithfully fit goes, um, that's been around since 2021 after I took control of my life. Um, but I do help clients all over the, the map. I have clients in uh, Nevada. I have clients um, more north in Connecticut. I have them all over the place. Referral business is huge. Um, so I just expand my reach on social and love helping whoever is you know, willing to commit and want to change their life. Awesome. Austin, let's go to you next. Um, yes, owner of Melodic Labs. So we cover the Mahoney, Trumbull, and Columbia counties here in the Youngstown area. And then, like I said, we cover two colleges. So Westminster, which is in New Wilmington, and then uh, YSU. And one thing I, I will I will give Austin a shout out um, for is because I've been a, a, on the guest uh, on a guest on the show a lot, but he did start his business in high school um, and has really prospered since um it's one thing uh, when i when i was one of um the educational aides and coaches when austin was in school he really started this vision as a 16 and 17 year old kid and now that he's a grown man um really really proud of him from the person he's he was to the person he become and being such a successful young business owner so not i'm not proud of all of our guests but i've known austin a long time so just wanted to shout him out on that but um mike let's let's go to you next and finish up this question yeah, uh, so both actually the podcast and the merch store actually came to fruition in 2020 uh, during the pandemic. So we're coming up on three years. It'll be three years for the show here this December for Ride Home Rants, and it'll be it's already three years uh, this month in March uh, for uh, the Stupid Should Hurt merch store. Basically, uh, we. I started kind of locally with um, the merch, uh, just getting it out to people that I knew and around the Zanesville, Philo area. It has grown uh, to a global entity. There are people that I can see looking from other countries and purchasing from other countries. And as most of you know from the show, we are global here with the show. We are actually heard in, and I know... Johnny, you're the you're the numbers guy, but I believe we're in 41 countries as of right now with Ride Home Rants. Yeah, right around that, and we are right at the um, thousand city mark. Yep. Maybe shortly, um, or or right before that, maybe like 992 or something like that. But um, yeah, so. You know, everybody, I mean, it's definitely, you know, great that your businesses have grown and, you know, you're growing and, and you're not just your local area, but, you know, on the on the regional and global scale. So that's that's definitely a testament to all of our guests on um, the second question here. And, and we're going to kind of go into a little bit different of a, a question here is, you know, how do you market your show? Um, what do you find that, that works the best for you? Is it word of mouth, social media, radio, TV, newspaper, you know, or something else? You know, what have you found that works particularly best for your business? Because everybody's business is going to be marketed a little bit different. But let's just kind of reverse the order here. Mike, let's start with you. So for the show here, uh, I'm big on social media and um, <clears throat> all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, venturing into TikTok, uh, that land, which is crazy with the numbers that you can see from there. Um and I really hit that hard for Stupid Should Hurt. I actually do a combination of social media and email marketing, too, as well. Uh, so collecting emails and that from people that are visiting the website, I'm able to now market to them uh, via email. It's a little bit old school, I guess you could say. A lot of people use that in the past, but I found it to be pretty successful. Okay. Austin, how, how about you with your business? What, what do you find that works the best? Yeah, uh, kind of a little bit what Mike, Michael said. So we started doing uh, social media a lot, and it really people really attract that for because we post all the scores throughout the night, especially on Friday football. Uh, I know John's, you know, John can back me up on this. Like people when they're at games, they 
it's hard to find sports nowadays here at our high school around our rally. So I know they, they come to us all the time and we have mostly all the scores up there at once uh, as someone scores. So um, that's pretty cool to see. I think social media really hits it for us. We get probably about thirty to 40,000 views a night on, on Friday football, I should say. And Austin, I know you, you've had a couple radio plugs as well. Do you find those to be as beneficial as the social media? No, um, I think the radio side of things and even our website, like our website doesn't get as many views as possible or as it should. I think it's just more social media. Gotcha. Nicole, how, how about you? What, what, uh, what works best for you guys? Sure. So with real estate, it's a little bit different. We do some segmented targeting. Um, so we target certain lists for people that would be open to, you know, selling or mo- be motivated to sell their property. Um, so we do a lot of direct mail marketing. Um, we have a website that you can go to. We also get a lot of referral business for people that sold us their property and then they know somebody else that needs to sell or wants to sell. Um, and then, you know, we're on Facebook, Instagram and everything as well. As far as my health business goes, it's a lot more so, um, traffic on social, just showing up, um, showing my transformation and other clients that I work with, um, as well as referral business. Um, my, my base of clients with my health business is probably 85% referral business, just helping people on the front end, um, make the transformation and keeping them happy and walking them through all steps of their health transformation. Uh, um, as long as you, you know, provide good quality business up front, referrals are huge for you. It's a huge piece of business. Okay. And I'm, and I'm sure that's probably similar that like that referral word of mouth is probably similar to what Roger and Jason and, and, and even Brandon kind of go through to an extent. Um, but uh, Roger, let's go to you next. What, what works for you best from that marketing standpoint um, with your business? Um, I definitely uh, think social media is definitely a huge thing right now. So you know, I have a pretty big Facebook um, following. We also do lots of Facebook marketing. So we spend quite a bit of money on Facebook marketing. Word of mouth is huge. Um, another thing, I'm, I'm like once a month on, on a television, the Good Morning the Fox, uh, Fox ain't good morning show. Uh, I'm on there once a month. That's good for marketing, word of mouth. Um, and, uh, Google, Google ads is huge for us. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Brandon, how about you? What works the best for you? Yeah. So, um, I'm going to kind of continue the trend of social media. I think that's just the age that we're all in. Uh, you know, social media always works. Uh, but for us, it's, 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 it's heavy on the word of mouth. Um, our clients you see what I do is we have such a uh, broad clientele that we work with. Again, student we have student youth pro- programming. We work with corporation businesses. You know, we 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 got we bagged a couple Fortune 500 companies recently. Um, I'm actually working with the Fortune 500 this week, uh, training their leadership, which is super cool. And so, what I like to gather from them and from our clients is testimonials. Testimonials are like really really big, and like part of our contract clause is when we sign the contract with you. Uh, we get to advertise that we're in partnership and working with you. So we put that on our social media and then I have them put that on their social media to market it. So um, that kind of, you know, generates the buzz and generates more uh, um, clientele. Of course, we, we're taking another approach this year because the past couple of years, again, the business has completely blown up. Uh, just, you know, again, uh, the, the organization down in Texas, how we got hooked up with there was they found us on through a Google, Google search engine. They, they searched uh, diversity trainings and whatnot, because when that when that referral came through, I was like, how the hell does an organization in Texas find us here in Erie, Pennsylvania? And my conversations with them were just search engines, you know, just kind of looking for uh, diversity related programming. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, that's really like our big push right now. And our testimonials and our clients, like they 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 say the work that we do, we deliver that product, and um, and that's been a big push. But we're gonna start being a little bit more. I don't want to use the word like aggressive in a negative way, but we're gonna be a little more aggressive this year in regards to marketing and reaching out to other clients um, on a national level, just to kind of expand our base a little bit. Okay, and Jason, bring us home on this question. What kind of works best for you, especially because I guess yours is so regionally, you know, based as well? Mm-hmm. Um, probably number one has been direct marketing. Uh, given what I do, trying to work with, with sports teams in the area, 
just contacting the coaches direct, contacting the athletic directors direct, um, just kind of staying in their quarterly emails, just sending free information with nutrition or offering free clinics, that kind of thing, just to get a foot in the door and get to know people, um, start building a relationship, uh, someone they can trust. Social media never, I don't think social media ever really got me uh, an actual sale, but it just helped kind of bolster that, that trust factor where they see the content that's going out isn't bogus. It's like solid stuff. And I think that kind of helped build up a reputation for uh, just knowing what I'm talking about. Um, and then after, after that, every, a couple of people already said it to the referrals. Um, I don't think the social media ever helped like my post. I don't think ever got a sale, but I know like my clients post have. Um, when they're, when they're putting up, when they're showing their numbers or their progress, whatever it is, and then people are going, Oh my God, you look great. And they're commenting on it and liking it and loving it and all that, that that's gotten a lot of attention over time. So referrals and direct marketing. Okay. So let's kind of move on to the next question then for everybody. So, and this is going to be a little bit different for everyone, um, because everybody started their businesses at different time, but depending on when you started your business, you know, how has the COVID era impacted your businesses and the, uh, services you offer so jason you just finished up the last question but let's kind of start with you on that one um it was challenging i didn't do much during the covid like when things were really at its peak because i don't, I don't know if anyone was uh weight room and gyms were closed down a lot of schools weren't running any program in the off season uh, a lot of kids really missed out on on a good two years of getting stronger getting faster getting bigger whatever it might be um there was a yeah it was a problem um kids didn't recover from it um, I didn't do much work in it, try getting some, some online programming, getting some zoom type workouts and that kind of thing going. Uh, but that was more of the personal training one-on-one, -on -one. the strength conditioning world suffered during that phase and coming out of it, it's been a little rocky, uh, a couple of the teams that I've worked with recently, I could feel that they were fresh to it. Like I was kind of used to getting in and guys having a, you know, knowing how to squat a little bit, knowing how to hang clean a little bit. And now I'm working with guys that are juniors and seniors and they haven't done it in two, three years. It was like, it was kind of a refresher for me of got to go back and teach the basics all over again, which is great, really. Um, but it's been like kind of like, oh, shoot, I didn't see that one coming. So it's been it's kind of a, a reset in a way with what I do. Yeah, no, definitely. I definitely can see that that, you know, really having the biggest effect especially on, on you, especially with that one on one. But um, Brandon, let's go to you on this one. Um, you know, how, how, and, I, and I know we've had this conversation, but kind of tell everybody else, you know, how's this affected how did it affect your business? Yeah, so um, COVID is actually, like, COVID was actually one of the reasons why we kind of started to explode the way we did. And, I mean, I know that wasn't the case, unfortunately, for a lot of businesses, but for us, um, my, you know, my organization is really focused on, you know, identity. And the reason I started it was because of, you know, my racial background, um, identity issues, you know, being biracial, part black, part white, growing up, going through those things. I started the organization back during the uh, Trayvon Martin uh, case, and that was one of the reasons, that was one of the motivators to start to have these conversations because I've seen such a divide between people just from all angles and, like, the Facebook debates and just kind of how culturally we were really, you thought that we were a lot more advanced than we what we were, and really we, we weren't so much. And so I, I that was, like, the push for me. And not, and, and not just that we focus on race and ethnicity, I think – what I wanted to do with Open Dies was take diversity out of the box that we placed it in. And so diversity is under the umbrella of the word diversity, even though it's an oversaturated term. We talk about ageism, ableism. We talk about mental health. We talk about leadership development. We talk about mindfulness-based practice. Um, all those things and all those principles I consider to be part of diversity. So when the, when the pandemic hit, um, obviously it was, it was a big, like, because I had a lot of projects, you know, really in place that got shut down obviously so we were kind of stagnant for a period of time of course george floyd happened brianna taylor ahmed aubrey the social unrest happened of course the pandemic everything was just kind of uh, all bottled up and then uh, as far as like at one point it was like the floodgates had opened up and people were reaching out to me because they knew that i was in this space just from the years prior uh, even though we weren't as you know big at the time uh, people knew that I was in this space and I was talking about this and having these conversations. And so people started reaching out. And then we started kind of building that base. We started building workshops. We started building these conversations. And I don't call what we do diversity trainings anymore. I stay away from like that concept because, again, oversaturated. We call what we do culturally conscious conversations. 
And so we have, we go in spaces and we have dialogue to create healthy communication patterns about, it could be ethnicity, it could be about age, it could be about mental health, it could be about workplace culture, it could be about peer culture. So all of these different things that we really want to create with one another, just how to be human beings and how to communicate in a healthy and appropriate way. That's really the essence of what it is that we do. So the pandemic kind of spearheaded us in, and jump-started us into the space that we're in now, which has led us to more of a national recognition. Okay. So Roger, how about how about you? How did it, uh, how did the COVID era affect you with, you know, two businesses? Well, my Asheville office, we, we saw a high amount of patients. So we were seeing, you know, close to 80 to 100 patients a day. And, you know, the, how it affected that office was, no employees wanted to work after that. So it was actually hard to, to actually practice uh, without employees. So we had to tone things down at the Asheville office, seem more minimal. Uh, the Cleveland office, we opened up uh, one week before COVID. So that was <laughs> definitely an experience. So, but one week with COVID, you know, again, no employees wanted to work. But, you know, we, we had overhead. So, and we were, um, um, what was that word? A necessary employee. We were able to work still, so uh, we definitely try to, you know, I mean, people still had uh, neck pain and low back pain, you know, and we really pushed the the chiropractic booster their immunity, so you know, people's natural health. So that's how I mean. I mean, it definitely affected our business number wise, but I think you got the word out about natural immunity. Gotcha, Nicole. How about you guys? How did the pandemic era, you know, affect your your businesses? Um, so when it comes to the real estate business, we actually were operating with a few employees, um, when it hit and, um, when that, when COVID and the pandemic ended up happening, you were living in a time of uncertainty. So didn't know, you know, when it was going to go away, um, not, wasn't sure what was going to happen next. So unfortunately, we had to let some employees go, and we got really lean, uh, more smarter with our business practices. Um, we were doing a lot of real estate um, avenues with flips and um, buy and holds and wholesaling that we just ended up getting really lean and didn't do all avenues of real estate, and it ended up actually being our best year of business with um COVID. Uh, so it was, it was at first an uncertain moment, but then ended up being the best, uh, year in volume that we did numbers wise when it comes to, um, income. As far as my health practice goes, um, it came about because of COVID, you know, living, uh, you get married and you kind of let yourself go. And then, you know, pandemic hits and you just start gorging on all the, all the foods and I need people to go to the gym. And so pound after pound, just, you know, packed on. And once COVID started trickling away, I was like, it's time to get my butt in gear. And then that's how basically the health business came about because of, of the pandemic. So. Okay. Austin, how did, um, how did it affect you in the sports realm? Yeah, like Jason was saying, I mean, every game was canceled. I mean, gyms were closed. So, we, you know, it was really hard to do anything. The only thing we really did was, you know, a lot of Zoom interviews with kids, former kids we covered in high school that, you know, played collegially now because uh, they were shut down as well. So uh, basically that's what we did most of the time. Just, and we did a lot of podcasts with the whole staff just talking about things and, you know, hoping for football season back, you know, in the upcoming year so. A lot of podcasts, a lot of shows, a lot of Zoom conference calls. Gotcha. And then, Mike, bring us home on that question. Yeah, uh, kind of like uh, Roger with the Cleveland office. Uh, my businesses opened up during the pandemic, and it was directly affected because of the pandemic. So the show uh, here was started um, – a little bit spitefully, I'll say for mine, for the new listeners, I know I've talked about this in the early season ones of the show episodes. Uh, this show started because back in March of 2020, when I was, uh, you know, really hitting the ground running with my comedy career and everything like that, was about to sign with a uh, entertainment company back then. 
and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and they said uh, I didn't have an online presence and I wasn't marketable because of that. Um, and to that guy, I mean, as much as I'm thankful for the show, I really want to rub it in his face that we're heard in 41 countries and almost a thousand cities in season three. Uh, but that was it was kind of a spiteful thing and it started with me just literally on my day home from my day jobs that I had during the pandemic being an essential worker in sales, uh, just really ranting about my day. And the merch store, I'd always been kicking it around as starting uh, the merch to help support my comedy career and everything like that. Uh, so that I just I just picked up and just started making designs, started putting shirts and hats and everything like that out there. And it kind of was fitting for the time, too, when the stupid shit hurt name when 2020 and COVID hit. So that's kind of, it was the reason, COVID was the reason for my businesses to be started. And I, and I can say I really was the uh, the first guest that when Mike kind of got away from the ranting and we got into this, <laughs> yeah. I was the very first guest. And now you're like, we're on season three and I'm hosting the show. So um, th- I think, I guess, thank you, COVID, for uh, for that. So um, let's kind of go on to the next next one here. And, Mike, we're going to start with you on this. Um, and, and some of you have hint, hinted on this already, but just kind of maybe want to reiterate it, um, you know, do you think you want to expand your business to be any bigger at any point? Or are you kind of comfortable with the size it is right now? So I know some have hinted on this, um, but I know some people have mentioned about expanding. So, Mike, let's start with you. Um, do you want this, your businesses to expand? And if so, you know, how far you want to go out? As far as possible. I mean, I, I, um, I want these to blow up, honestly, both the merch and the, the show more than it already has. Um, but yeah, my, I, I don't have any plans of stopping what I'm doing and people always telling me, uh, that it's a waste of time, makes me want to expand it and grow it and just, uh, get to a point where I, I still do work a day job too as well, where these are my main businesses and my full-time income and my full-time responsibilities is the show, my merch store and comedy career. I've always said that, so I'm shooting for the stars on this one. I, I'm, I'm looking to grow as much as possible. Austin, how about you? Because I know you've recently expanded into some Pennsylvania, uh, Western Pennsylvania parts of your business. So, how about you? Do you, you want to keep expanding uh, Melodic Life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, trying to pick up some more colleges, and some more high schools in that PA area. Uh, Ohio, not that much. It's more PA that we're looking towards. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Nicole, how about you? I mean, you mentioned about Florida with one of them. Um, but, but you know, what about, what about you and your husband? What do you think you guys want to do? Yeah, we have a goal to get to a hundred rental doors in Columbus. Um, we have a property management company that handles a lot of, um, the, the rental side of, of the business, which would then allow us to also expand into Florida vacation rentals. Like that's, another business venture that we would like to do. So we're not planning on stopping anytime soon. Um, the rental side of things though, is our retirement gig. Um, so we're very grateful for that. Um, and very grateful for him and his vision with, you know, the real estate side of things. Um, as far as the health business goes, I am looking to help as many people get healthy as possible, showing them that, you know, you're not stuck you're not alone. You can change and transform your life. You can lose weight. You can feel better. You can come off of medication like I did. You can feel better with your energy. You can be a better spouse, a better parent. Um, so I'm not ta- stopping anytime soon with that either. Okay. Um, let's go with you next, uh, Roger. What, what, what do you, uh, what do you think you want to do with your business? Is you looking to expand for number three? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. I, I am actually looking in. I had one more office. You know, there's people who always suffer from low back, neck pain. I mean, especially with the spinal decompression business offer, we offer something that's specialized that no one has in Northeast Ohio. So, you know, people drive a distance to Willoughby Hills office. So, you know, I'm thinking about an office on the west side of Cleveland as the next possibility. And just so everybody knows that's in the Cleveland area, west side is not the best side. The east side is a lot better. And I, I will I will bring that for the next 50 years that I'm alive. The east side is better in Cleveland. 
and I know Jason and Roger agree with me on this. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> um, let's go. Let's go with you, um, um, Brandon, on on this. Where do you, uh, you know, do you, you mentioned about expanding, of course, but maybe just kind of, um, you know, reiterate what you said earlier. Yeah. So um, this is kind of funny because I just had a meeting this morning with. Uh, I'm, we're, we're starting an Open Eyes Ambassador Program, and one of the first locations that we're going to expand to is the Columbus, Ohio area. Um, I have someone out there uh, who lives out there, so we've been talking about a you know a plan of attack uh and getting getting things up and running in, in into the Columbus, Ohio uh area. So we were just kind of mapping out some things and um grassroots, you know, kind of like how we did it here. Um we started this year, got people involved, you know, I have a team, uh operations director, programming person, marketing person, social media person. You know, I have I have a team behind me. So it doesn't this whole thing moves because we have we have people who are supporting the movement and the mission and vision. So um, my business mentors said, you know, let's let it do it. You should just go for it and put that expansion project into play. So yeah, it's happening. And and we're going to do, we're going to, like I said, we're going to make this a global entity. You know, that's where the, that's where the vision's going. Gotcha. And Jason, how, how about you with, with your business? What, do you want to, you know, get any bigger and take on more clients at this time? Um, yes and no. Uh, it's funny. I, you asked a question. I wrote down some notes and I'm just kind of thinking about it. I, 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 I do, but I don't. Um, kind of, I, cause I'm a little bit of a control freak with how things go. The only, like the expansion I'd want to have would be like a standalone gym specific for what I do. Um, and then kind of, even that I was, you know, I listened to everyone talk. Um, I had this concept of a strip mall with all the, the whole strip mall are the tools of everyone in it. And it's funny listening to, to Roger, Nicole and Brandon, like what they do is like, I would want them to be neighbors in, in the, the type of idea I have because you're thinking of, of young athletes and young people in general just trying to improve their lives and get stronger and just independent and understand their own strength, grow and, and, and do the be, be leaders in their own communities and whether that's the school or wherever it is. Um, a whole, you know, kind of synergy of, of, of energy to, um, to push that forward is, is really what I'm, what I'm trying to make happen, to have people around to, to be able to cover all bases. Cause I don't think one person can do it all. So you have to have, have a team and, and that's, that's, that's really the plan. Well, if you get a strip mall, that's big enough and you got two other things, you could, Mike could open own his own merch store on there. Mm-hmm. And then Austin can have the, re- the studio from Melodic live um, mm-hmm. Northeast, mm-hmm. and he can have it up mm-hmm. there. And then I'll just, I'll come in and I'll wave to everybody and drink a coffee and people will be like, who's that guy? And he's like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know that guy. Brand, random guy that hangs out here. So, <laughs> Um, so definitely awesome answers. Um, you know, the next question is kind of going to revert back to what we talked about in, um, the second topic, but Jason, we're going to start with you, you know, in the ever expanding and demanding sales market, how do you make sure your business and you stand out from your competitors? How do I make sure that it stands out? Um, I don't really think about it at all. Um, I'm confident in the science of what I do. I'm, um, are you thinking like from a marketing standpoint, standout kind of thing? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I really don't, I don't think about it at all. I don't want to get distracted with that marketing game because there's just so much fluff out there in that world of what's been in the fitness industry. Um, I don't, I don't bother with it at all. I just want to put out great work, uh, work with the kids and do what I do and not waste any energy on all those, all those other things. Gotcha. Okay. Brandon, how about, how about you? Um, that's a good question. One of my favorite Drake verses is it's not about who does it first. It's about who does it better. Uh, so I, I have a market, there's a market. I'm not the only type of person that does this type of stuff. I'm not the only person who's a, a coaching. I'm not the only person who's doing motivational speaking. I'm not the person who's only in diversity, the diversity realm. Um, and I'll refer back to my, what I said earlier about this morning, my part of my meeting about the expansion project was to see who are our uh, competitors, who are the people in the space. Um, because there's people everywhere doing what we do, especially after, you know, the pandemic and the social unrest or a lot of people in these spaces, diversity, equity, and inclusion is a popular topic right now. Um, they're creating positions based off of it. So how do we survive in this market? And, um, and I, and I, and I listen to what people say, like, you know, for instance, when I, when that organization down in Texas, you know, and they reached out to us and I had a meeting with them, one of my questions to them was, what was it about us that, that stuck out for you? Um, and they said, well, you have a very interesting twist on diversity education. You talk about mindfulness-based practice and mental health, but we don't see that a lot. Ding, ding, ding. So that's one of the things that I really took from that, from hearing from somebody in a, in a whole different state, and especially down south. 
And I brought that to my team. I said, this is the thing that we need to continue to expand on. If they're not, if they haven't seen anything like this, um, then we need to look to see, we need to capitalize off of that. So just understanding the landscape of, you know, doing conducting a landscape analysis and knowing who the competitors are and what they're doing and, and continuing just to do us. And, and, you know, like I said, just keeping our heads up and, and pushing forward and being unique. Okay. Uh, Roger, how about, how about you? Um, I, I guess just, you know, building your brand, um, and, and being unique and different in, in your click. Uh, at my office, you know, we're chiropractors and there's chiropractors everywhere, but we again specialize in spinal decompression. Um, we offer technology nobody has. Um, I'm also one of the speakers at the National Spinal Decompression Conference. You know, it's always trying to better yourself. Uh, on top of that, you know, getting results. I mean, if we're helping people um, avoid back surgery, uh, another thing, getting testimonials, like um, someone said before, is huge. So getting the word out there, how we're actually helping people. And one thing I, I will definitely say, if, if you don't follow, um, you know, Dr. Roger on, on Instagram, definitely do because I think he has every MMA fighter and, and pro combat sport athlete going in <laughs> to his yeah. businesses to get worked on. So, I mean, that's definitely testimonial right there. And, and that's great. Um, but, you know, for, you know, for, um, you know, forever expand, or I'm sorry, for, you know, having your different brands and being out competitors, I would say, you know, following all of you on social media, different platforms, I think all of you do a great job, you know, with, with competition, with other, what other people are doing, but Nicole, let's go to you on, uh, on, on to answer this next. Yeah, I feel like both avenues that I'm a part of, for example, real estate is very saturated in Columbus now. Um, the city is continuously growing and booming, um, which is a great thing. But with saturation, you know, it gets harder and harder. However, last year we ended up buying 20 rental doors, which is huge for just the husband and wife team. Um, so just continuing to show up and I'm also a believer that what's meant to be will be, and don't get hung up on things that you can't control. Um, when it comes to health and fitness, I mean, same thing, that's a huge saturated industry as well. Um, a lot of people are moving into the health world, um, which is great, you know, so it's again, just a matter of showing up and helping the people that um, want to be there, that want to commit. And not everybody does um, when it comes to health. You know, some people just want that instant gratification. That's kind of the world that we live in now. And um, so I just shake it off when sometimes things don't go your way. And again, control what you can control and keep showing up. And the right people will come and the money will come with it too. And sometimes money isn't always... It isn't always the best option either. Doing what you love and your passion, the money flows with that. Absolutely. Austin, how about you? You know, because you're you're definitely in a unique um unique area, right? You're competing against news stations and you're competing against people dribbling in from Cleveland and Canton and Akron with that Youngstown area. So, you know, how do you stand out, um, especially being somebody who started from the high school realm to where you're at now? Uh, you know, how do you make your business you know, stand out from all these different competitors and news stations? Yeah, well, John, I think it's different because all the news stations, all they care about is mostly like highlights during the games, especially on Friday nights. We are more mostly just scores throughout the entire night. So I don't think we have like a competition, you should say, because no one really does what we do. We really don't do what they do. Uh, we're close right. with all the news stations around here. So, um and I know, you know, sometimes they use our scores because they don't get them in like we would do and, and stuff like that. So I, I don't think we have much competition. Maybe when it comes down to colleges about who can, who can get the story out first about why she's a football coach or or stuff like that. I think that that's more of competition more than it is when it comes to scores and games on Friday night or something. Gotcha. Okay. And Mike, bring us home on this one. Uh, I mean, with, with podcasting, there is just millions and millions of – podcast out there it <clears throat> seems like every joe schmo nowadays has a uh has a podcast about something but it's about standing out and um like i mean everyone's been really hitting on this you know trying to build your brand like roger was talking about and 
build the ride home rants and the Mike Bono comedy brand. Uh, kind of goes hand in hand, podcast and merch store. So, just trying to stand out really is is the main thing. And I mean, I made mean, everyone really. I'm just reiterating what everyone kind of said. And I mean, you would know about this too, Fiddy. I mean, with with the podcast and then you know, the marketing that we do for the show. Absolutely. Um, you know, one thing I, I will I will jump on here, and, and people always say, you know, how do you find a different guest every week? And that's that can be hard because you only know so many people in life. But social media is great. But why do you bring all these different people on? And you know, all of you have been guests at different times, roundtables. But yet, all of you come from a unique background. You come from a unique job area, and you come from a unique area that you live in. So we like to stand out in that area that we bring a let me help you, help me, help you type of deal, you know, because we're going to get you on a podcast and we're going to have you, you know, talk to people in 40 countries and a thousand cities and people from the week before who may have been a high school teacher and coach to this week who was a doctor of, uh, you know, chiropractic medicine to next week is a former NFL retired quarterback to the following week could be the guy who owns his own you know, um, sports company. So, you know, we want to help people in that regard. And that's kind of how we market, um, for people that don't know about the show. That's why every week we try to have on somebody from a different background. doesn't always work. Um, but you know, for the most part, I think we've had a a wide varying amount of people. So, um, we got two other, uh, quick topics we're going to talk about and we'll kind of be wrapping it up here, but let's kind of spin this in another direction and talk about sponsorships now. Um, did your business sponsor or cross promote with any other business or area? Um, do you think cross sponsorships help at all? You know, for example, um, Austin and Mike and myself, we've cross um, promoted Austin's Melodic Live with the Ride Home Rants podcast. Um, does anyone else kind of do anything like that or find any interest and value in that? So, Jason, let's kind of start with you. Um, I tried when I was younger, uh, and a friend taught me a, a lesson that was. I didn't like to hear it, but I'm like, damn, it was true. And it kind of always kind of stuck around for me. You know, we do, I would try to trade services. You advertise this for me. I'll advertise that for you. Share promotions on social media. And um, he said, you got to be careful doing that because someone's always going to feel that they got more out of the deal. I was like, oh, what are, at first, I didn't really like it. It just seemed negative. And I was like, really? Like, who cares? We're all just helping each other. Um, but then as it kind of moved along, I was like, eh, damn, kind of. Someone always had a little bit of resentment about they just didn't get what they thought they were going to get. Um, and it just, you know, didn't really work out like that. So I've tried in the past, especially with what I do, like working with local uh, uh, shoe companies in the area that sell running shoes or workout equipment, that stuff. Um, but it just never, it never really stuck the way I, I thought it would stick, given, because it seems like such a great intention and good idea, but it never really hit the way I thought it would for me. Gotcha. Um, Brandon, how about you? Yeah, we certainly... Um, I mean, just in the space that we're in with, um, again, a social uh, service type of group. And of course, um, there's a lot of organizations that are, are, we have a, there's a lot of organizations in Erie that do some type of service. And so there is a very, there's a high competitive nature here, but there is also a a sense of collaboration and cohesiveness. Uh, So yeah, we, we do a lot of, we do work. I'm doing a, I'm doing a collaborative event right now with our, with our Erie city school district, you know, we're, where we're utilizing some of their students to do some programming. So for us in those spaces, it's very beneficial, you know, that people are open to other organizations who want to come in and do programming. Um, and of course, I mean, I'm a board of director for a number of organizations in the city. And of course, you know, that always lends other opportunities, um, uh, obviously with regards to making sure there's no conflicts of interest with those particular entities. But um, yeah, you just, you kind of build, you build those, you build your base and you build your reputation and people support it. Uh, some people obviously don't. Uh, you got to be careful with who, you know, what you do and who you do business with. Um, obviously, as Jason was saying, you got to be careful too, because somebody might feel slighted that they didn't get um, more exposure than you did on that project. So um, I kind of, I've trial and error, you know, and I've learned that you have to be very clear and concise about what it is that you want to do. And if it doesn't work out, you don't need to move forward with it. So, um, but collaboration is key and it's important for our community. And in the business that I'm in, uh, modeling that and seeing, having other people see what you do, it's important. So yeah, it has its benefits. Okay. Nicole, do you guys do any, you know, collaboration, cross sponsorships, um, sponsorships in general for anything else? Um, not really. So with our real estate business, we're a little bit different. We're not realtors. Um, we don't go out 
you know, show a property. Um, we buy a lot of properties off market. So ours is a little bit different, a little different segue than most people are used to when it comes to the, the realtor world um, and the real estate world. Um, we are investors. So where we cross promote kind of is we use a lot of, um, a lot of investors to fund some of our deals. And therefore we invest, um, as investors for other, um, what do I want to say? Other investors that are in the market, if they are buying a deal then we kind of invest and help them get the deal. Um, if they need, you know, cash to buy the deal. So that's kind of how we would cross promote. But as far as like property wise, um, it, it's, it's just not within our, within our area. Gotcha. And yeah. then the health business, I'm just a one man team. So it's just me foot traffic, you know, just, I don't really cross promote much. I just show up on social media and if, if you see me, I'm there. And then again, the referral business, I just, I do everything on the go and from wherever. Sure. Mike. Um, and I mean, I know this answer, but let's, let's hear from you next. Yeah. Uh, we've cross promoted, like you said, with Austin, um, and a bunch of other shows too, as well. I've, uh, I've cross promoted. I actually, uh, just started a, uh, promotion with uh, a buddy of mine and he actually has uh, one of those virtual race leagues and I am a sponsor the head sponsor on the hood of his uh, car I mean the NASCAR drivers did this back in 2020 when everything was shut down so he started that league and I helped him out uh, by sponsoring his car and stuff like that so that was kind of a unique one that we've done in the past I mean but yeah we're always looking for For sponsorships, obviously, uh, with the three that we have, obviously one is mine uh, with the Stupid Shit Hurt merch store, but um, and being affiliates is what uh, I found out for the show with Tactical Brotherhood and uh, Reaper Apparel. Uh, With those two sponsors that are on the show here, you know, it's kind of like what Jason was saying. It is a, uh, oh, well, you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back kind of deal where... Uh, I'm wearing their gear on the show and out in public and all that, and I'm talking about their their stuff as an advocate and a brand ambassador for them. And in turn, if anything sells from that, you know, that's where the scratch my back, scratch your back kind of works out. But, yeah, always looking for sponsorships for sure. Roger, how about you and your business? You've already kind of talked about some of the sponsorship with the, uh, the fighters, so we have a wide variety of – you know, gyms that I cross sponsorship, uh, strong style, upgraded industries, um, the fighters that come into my office, you know, obviously when they come in, we, we also sponsor them when they go to their events. They also, you know, put, put our name onto their, their fight shorts or whatnot, which is, a, I feel like a huge thing having, having them do that for our, for our office is, you know, when professional athletes come to your office. You know, it, it, it definitely it definitely helps. Um, other sponsorship things, you know, I'm also the chiropractor for the Spire Academy, so it's um, it's elite athletes going on to the next level. So Lamelo Ball also goes there, but went there. Um, so you know, we cross sponsorship with the Spire, which is a huge thing. So you know, I, I feel like getting your brand out there in huge different avenues is huge. Gotcha. And Austin, bring us home on this one. Yeah, I mean, besides what Mike said, besides, you know, um, sponsoring with them, that's really it with the crossing. Um, we just really do just uh, main sponsoring. So that's really it. Gotcha. And the next one, everybody will get 30 seconds to answer. Um, so here it is. You know, for all the new and current listeners out there, let's really think about this, right? Um, when, when everybody answers this. So let's, guests, let's tell everyone why supporting small businesses is so important. So I'll give you about 30 seconds. Jason, let's start with you. Small business. Um, it's, it's, it's moms and dads. It's local people. It's uh, a lot of times it's people that grow up in the community. Um, it's the dream. It's their dream. You know, a lot of people, I'm just thinking of my neighborhood where I live right now. There's probably 30 seconds. I, I got 
probably 10 <laughs> that are within a two mile radius of people that I've known for 20 years that opened something right here. Um, would you rather support that or would you rather support the corporate chain? That's uh, a no brainer. It's a good one. Brandon, how about you? Uh, look, I'm a, I'm a product of for people supporting small business. And so for me, it's, it's been, it's been everything. I'm in here in Erie, Pennsylvania, you know? And so, uh, to start something for people to invest into me and to invest into the situation and the, and the belief and the passion behind it is everything. So, um, it, yeah, supporting small businesses is, is just key. It's key for economic growth. It's key. Um, it shows us really the strength of, of our communities and it shows the strength of our people. Um, and to invest in the things that matter. And, and so, yeah, I'm, I, I always try to, especially during the pandemic, I was always buying local, supporting local, whether it was food places, stores, whatever I could. It's just, it's just extremely important. So um, I can't stress that enough. Okay, Nicole, let's go to you next. Oh my gosh, where do you even start with small businesses, right? Like we're built off of small businesses. That's how, you know, we, we started as, um, as a country. We had the people that settled here, um, our ancestors that had a dream and, you know, now, now it's trickled to us, you know? So small businesses are huge. It was your ancestors, ancestors dream. And that's why supporting small businesses is so, is so huge. Don't let it die because that was your ancestors that founded us off of that. Okay. Roger, let's go to you next. I'm going to kind of reiterate what everybody says. It's, it's supporting family, supporting people who are chasing their dreams. It's supporting who supports you. I mean, um, the small businesses, what, what compromises the whole community. So without small businesses, I mean, I think that's what the whole United States is about. So it's a huge thing to support small businesses. Okay. Mike, how about you? Yeah. Um, I, I, I love small businesses. My wife and I always are going to little mom and pop shops and stuff like that. And, uh, us actually being new to the area that we're in, I mean, we love to do that and to see the community and go into the community and help out where we're living now. And like Nicole and Roger said, you know, this country was founded on small businesses. I mean, that's what grew this country to what it is. And I will always, always support small businesses. Austin, bring us home. Yeah, 100% definitely support small businesses. I live in a small city, so... Definitely, um, you know, a lot of easier for us to uh, support each each and every one of them. So definitely support supported for sure. You know, and I, and I definitely want to you know throw in there this because I, I love the area and I'm, I'm always gonna always gonna uh, rep it. But you know, if people really want to support you know local and you're in the the Lake County Greater Cleveland area, come to downtown Willoughby. Uh, has all types of small businesses there. I know some of the people. Um, on this podcast have have been there before, but definitely support them. But support all of them in your town if it's not from the coffee shop down the street then maybe the local handyman or the auto mechanic or the person who does tailor um alterations for you know wedding dresses or suits or tuxes or things like that so um you know when you help those people you you help not just their family but you help their uh their community too so before we get going um, with everybody, you know, as everybody knows and all the guests knows, we do have a segment called the Fast Fitty Five. So why not everyone's going to get five questions today. Everybody's going to get just one. So let's get it started. So, Jason, let's start with you on this. Is archery a true sport? Oh, my gosh. No. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's a skill. Okay. Roger, your, your question. Who's more terrifying, Ronald McDonald or Big Bird? <laughs> I'd say uh, Ronald McDonald because that 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 the face paint, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brandon, you're next. Now you only get pick one of these. All right, what animal do you not want to run into in the street? A Komodo dragon, a polar bear, or a giraffe? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, it would be pretty sweet to see a giraffe in the street. Uh, but also, I wouldn't want to run into a polar bear. That would be pretty mm -hmm. terrifying. Okay. Nicole, your question. Where would you rather live if you had to move from Columbus, Erie or Pittsburgh? Oh, Lord. Oh, probably Pittsburgh. 
Oh, come on, Sarah. Nicole. Oh, I know, man. I know. <laughs> I, and I'm not even a Pittsburgh fan. I cannot stand Pittsburgh, but the city's cool. I would live in Pittsburgh. All right, Austin, your question. Who wins the Super Bowl first? The Cleveland Browns or any team Baker Mayfield plays for? Oh, wow. <sighs> Any team we can make a place for <laughs> And I'm a Browns fan, and I'm saying that. <laughs> me too. And we're, and we're gonna we're gonna bring it home with Barno on the last question. If anybody knows me, this is a typical me question. Oh, yes. Barno, who would you rather be, Jason Statham or Liam Neeson? Oh. Why would you give me the toughest question? This is my show. Oh. Um. <laughs> oh. Oh. I. I gotta go. I gotta go. Statham. I can't, I don't know why. I don't, I really don't have a reason why. I, I, I Statham was the first name that popped in my head. We'll go, Jason. <laughs> All right. Well, that was this week's segment of the Fast Fifty Five. Even though nobody got five, everybody got one. So I think there are some of my best questions yet. <laughs> so. I want to thank all of our guests for coming on this week and talking about their businesses more in depth. You know, definitely please check out our guests and their sponsorships um, with their business, or sorry, and sponsor their businesses and shop small. Uh, Special thanks to Bono for letting me co-host the show, uh, really take over as the show, I guess, for the host of it. So thanks, Mike, for that. Um, You know, thank you to all of our guests being here today. And as always, if you like the show, be a friend and tell a friend. If you don't like it, tell them anyways, because they may like it just because you don't. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Ride Home Rants podcast, and we'll see you next week. The Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by Dubby Energy. Energy drinks made for gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. For gamers, streamers, and podcasters alike. Go to the link in the description where you can find the best energy drinks out there. Less caffeine than a cup of coffee. Also, no jitters and no crash afterwards. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off. Also, the Ride Home Rants podcast is brought to you by my favorite sponsor of the show, and that is Shankit Golf. Golf apparel made for the everyday golfer. We might not go out and shoot a six under par. We're probably going to shoot a six over par. But this is going to give us the gear that's going to help us rock it on and off of the course. Go to the link in the bio. Use the promo code Mike Bono and get yourself 10% off there as well.